Hi, I'm Will Bishop, and today we'll take a look at how to implement OAuth 2.0 with Mira. OAuth is the industry standard protocol for authorization when it comes to making REST API calls. But you might be wondering where to get started when implementing OAuth with Miro. So let's jump in with a quick walkthrough of the overall flow. We'll also take a look at one of our sample apps in context. Remember that you can find our step-by-step -step guide on the OAuth authorization flow at developers.miro.com. To make things easiest, let's cover the key components of this now. First, end users will need to authorize your application. Next, an authorization code will be exchanged for an access token. We'll retrieve an access token and refresh token pair, which will enable us to make requests to our APIs. Lastly, we can request a new access token using the refresh token returned in step three. These steps are helpful as a high level overview, but let's break it down a bit further. Here we see the detailed steps of the OAuth flow broken down between our end user, our app, and Miro. This is a lot of information though, so let's take it step by step. First, our app will construct an authorization or installation URL. This is how our OAuth flow will be kicked off to the end user. Next, we direct our user to this URL and they're presented with an authorization screen. When the user accepts this prompt and authorizes the app, they'll be redirected to your app's callback URL. This callback URL will contain an authorization code parameter, which your app will exchange for an access token and refresh token pair. This access token is what will be used to authorize requests to the Miro REST API. Once the access token is used, you can request a new access token and refresh token pair using the original refresh token that was returned when we exchanged the auth code earlier. Okay, that helps give us a bit of a better sense of this process, but let's put this into context with some code. You can find helpful code samples and demo apps here on our GitHub repo. Today we're going to take a look at our Node.js example app specifically. Keep in mind that you're going to want to make sure you meet all the prerequisites outlined here in our readme. That includes making sure you've created an app in Miro to generate your OAuth credentials, and also double checking that you're familiar with using local tunnel or ngrok or a similar service to host your local environment online. Once you've cloned the repo locally, you'll want to store your sensitive credentials in a .env file to ensure they're secure. Most importantly, this would include your Miro app's client ID and client secret. After you've set up your environment variables, you can go ahead and install the project dependencies. If you're using npm, run npm install in the project's root folder. Once you've installed the dependencies, we can run the project. In terminal, run npm run start, once again in the root folder. We can see that our server's online now, and so we can dive into the actual code. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Remember the authorization screen we mentioned earlier? But where do we handle this in the code? First, our app will check to see if the end user has already authorized or not. If the user has authorized our app, we'll have an authorization code already. If the user hasn't authorized our app, we don't have an authorization code yet, and we'll need to direct the user to the OAuth authorization URL that we've constructed here. Remember, when a user goes to this URL, they're asked to authorize the Miro OAuth. They're presented with this screen, where they'll install and authorize our app. From here, they're redirected to our app's callback URL, in this case, we've chosen a documentation as a quick example. You can see the code parameter is appended to our callback URL here. Once we have this authorization code, our app will parse it from the callback URL and use it in the next step of the OAuth flow. Now we will exchange this auth code for an access token and refresh token pair. To do this, we'll call the Miro OAuth endpoint, including the code, our app's client ID, and secret as parameters in the request URL. The response from the Miro OAuth endpoint will provide us with an access token that can be used immediately and a refresh token, which we can use shortly to get a new access token. We will save these values locally and use them in our last step. And now, the best part, we can use our access token to make a request to Miro's REST API. We can make a request to any API endpoint that our OAuth app scopes include. In this case, we're making a request to our Git board API, and including our access token as the value of the bearer token in our OAuth header. Our app then displays the JSON response in the browser, just for demo purposes. Lastly, since our access token is only valid for one hour, we'll want to make sure we're able to request a new token as needed. In our example app here, we're requesting a new access token and refresh token pair after we make our API request. To do so, we're calling the Miro OAuth endpoint once again, this time with grant type equal to refresh token, and including our original refresh token value as a parameter. This returns a new access token and refresh token pair, which we can then use to make more API requests. Note that this refresh token function simply logs these values but doesn't serve a functional purpose in this starter app itself. And that's it! Today we covered the Miro OAuth flow end-to-end -end and put it in context with our Node.js sample app. 
You can find this and many more helpful resources on developers.miro.com. Don't forget to check us out on our social channels as well.